Hello everyone, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 19. Uh, happy Thursday to you all. Uh, please remember as usual that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Um, also, please remember to ask your questions uh, for us to have a, Q, a good Q&A session at the end of this call. Let's just start with the updates from our first department, Engineering. Luca, if you would like to please, go ahead. Hello, everybody. Uh, Christmas approaching, and uh, so I'm speaking from a very decorated uh, and adorned Milano. Uh, I, I will uh, I will today speak about uh, some of the engineering topics, then later Alberto Garofalo will be more specific about uh, some others that are touching uh, sidechain consensus, extended model, new upcoming paper, and others. So let's start uh, with the main chain side, uh, where we are doing progress with the explorer issues. Uh, we uh, the main chain block explorer issues. We were uh, we are finalizing a document with an extensive analysis, not only about the issues that were reported there, uh, but also the possible approaches that we will uh, be able to follow uh, in order to not only solve those issues, but also upgrade the, the block explorer itself. So we, uh, we will soon have all the elements uh, to uh, understand which path to take. And a very similar update for Sphere by Horizon. We have been uh, looking into the main performance issue. We were able to reproduce the problem and we have identified one of the possible causes of it. So also here we have uh, finalized uh, uh, an analysis to understand all the possible uh, ways to, to fix it. And we started, uh, uh, we actually started already doing the builds for our first tests in, uh, in that direction. Uh, again, on the main chain uh, side of developments, we are uh, continuing uh, the changes required on the main chain in order to allow the backward transfers from side chains. So the design and implementation of class hierarchy, new version of block memory pool, modifications to the get block template and many more other subtasks uh, which are all being worked on in parallel. Uh, what else to say before I hand it to Alberto? Uh, just uh, would like to report that this has been once again a very productive week in the engineering department. Uh, I've been repeating this quite frequently in the last weeks because it's true, so it's worth to be mentioned. And the year is almost over, but the one thing we can really be proud of together with all the other achievements is we reached a very efficient uh, development process. So I wanted to say that. Alberto will talk also about uh, the deadlock issues, so I'll, I'll leave it that to him. Please, Alberto, feel free to take it from here. Thanks, Luca. Yes. Uh, okay. Some before the deck deadlock issue, some other update, and uh, in particular regarding uh, uh, the an important deep, deep dive session uh, that we had last week in uh, in Kharkov to go through uh, the details about the incentive strategy in the let me say in the side chain. Also taking in consideration the extended mode. So, uh, what does this include? This includes the incentivization scheme, for example, for forgers, for certificate submitters. So, why, uh, let me say, an actor should be uh, incentivized for submitting a certificate in mention, and uh, um, a strategy to be able to dynamically sign certificate fees. Uh, to reward main chain miners for certificate inclusion. So what we are talking about, uh, let's say that uh, uh, regularly uh, side chain will have to post a certificate in main chain and uh, uh, like any other kind of transaction, this should be um, reward, uh, should reward, let me say the miner uh, to include this transaction. So here uh, uh, the model should take into account this and uh, let me say and the design uh, should uh, find a solution for 
this, this, defining the the fees and the, how are decided and uh, what happens in case uh, the certificate is not included and, and so on. And uh, okay, and moreover, um, um, we also discussed and identified uh, uh, the reward scheme for the other actors that are part of the extended model. So um, I think that currently we have a quite um, let me see, detailed view about uh, of this, the, the, uh, the 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 design of it, and so I mean, uh, we will proceed uh, let me see, going even further in, uh, in the definition of it. And okay, another important topic for this week uh, was uh, consensus, and in particular, uh, we went through the process of. Uh, take delegation and uh, what will be our implementation strategy. So what we are talking about. In, in the sidechain, um, there is, uh, I mean, as you know, we are implementing uh, uh, trials based consensus and uh, uh, one of the security uh, parameters is affected by the number of empty slots. So, uh, for this reason, uh, it's quite important that uh, um, the um, percentage of the stake uh, that is considered for calculating the VRF function is uh, um, is somehow um, related to a set of actors that is actively involved in uh, in producing uh, blocks. So, what does this mean? This means that uh, um, the, the set of identified actors were to calculate the, the percentage of the stake uh, is a set of actors that is really uh, involved in the in, in the forging process. So for this reason, uh, we're not, uh, uh, when we calculate the percentage of the stake, we do not uh, consider the, the totality of the stake in the sidechain, but we consider, uh, let me say, a stake for forgers. And so for this reason, we introduce uh, um, uh, as I mean, uh, Browse already introduced. I mean, uh, we use um, the concept of stake delegation. So there are uh, pools that are going to um, perform the forging process, and uh, you, as a user of the site, and you will be able to delegate uh, to one of these pools uh, this process of forging. So. Uh, for, in this way, the user will also be able to get a reward, uh, also if he, if he is not doing anything, so just for having delegated some someone else. Okay, so, but, okay, as you can imagine, this needs to be implemented, and so we um, uh, then we identified how to design this tel delegation transaction, and now uh, the delegated stake pool will calculate uh, its eligibility and provide proof uh, if it is selected. Obviously, this topic uh, had to cover also the VRF design, uh, for which we are planning to use a code-alike approach, implementing it using both Poseidon and Pedersen Ash. I mean, this choice is influenced by uh, further um, consideration about the extended model. Uh, okay, switching topic regarding the paper uh, is almost ready for final review. And last thing that is missing is intro and title. So <laughs> we are really, really at the final stage here. Okay, um, going uh, to the deadlock issue, we finally identified the scenario where the concurrent rights to the database were creating the deadlock. And we discovered that also some other operations were not read safe. Uh, in particular, the, the situation was happening when a transaction uh, was sent to the mempool, then processed asynchronously to verify if it was belonging to the node wallet. And you remember that this asynchronous process was introduced for, uh, with the security fix for not allowing a malicious actor to detect if a node had a particular address. So, uh, in the meanwhile of this uh, transaction wallet processing, uh, a new block was received on the node. 
During this block processing, also the wallet was update, but not using the wallet lock, but only relying on the main lock. Okay, this was perfectly fine when the transaction mempool processing was synchronous and using the main lock, but now that is asynchronous and using only the wallet lock, block processing can be executed concurrently, generating the issue. So, uh, summarize, we introduce the wallet lock during block processing, but only for wallet update operations, and now seems fine, and uh, I mean, uh, for our tests seems uh, uh, not recreating any more the issue. And so pull request uh, is ready and uh, currently need to be reviewed. And after uh, it's going to be uh, launched. And almost everything from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. And before I pass it back, I also wanted to say that we are still holding position number 10 on Flipside Crypto overall ranking. We are just uh, 33 points away from becoming a project rated S, which is the maximum we can get. And uh, two weeks ago, we were 37 points away from that. So we did another little step towards the goal. That's it from here. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Next one, we have Gustavo from the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the help desk update given by Spencer. Please, Spencer. Good morning, <clears throat> everyone, or good day as the case may be. I apologize for the construction equipment, which you may be able to hear in the background. I've pasted a graphic into the text channel, which represents <clears throat> a high-level view of the service desk activity. Um, <clears throat> the graphic posted, again, is a high-level snapshot of the service desk activity over a trailing seven-day period of resolved tickets. Uh, we are continuing to use and improve the new issue labeling system, which allows us to give more consistent responses to users, as well as to uh, help us detect trends that can be passed on to other functional groups within Horizon. Uh, looking at the chart, uh, it's easy to see that the primary source of tickets for the service desk continues to be uh, defaulted by approximately... Uh, 60% of the total. Others uh, pretty much wallet-related issues spread over Sphere, Arizona, and Swing. Uh, a couple of node issues and a couple of business development issues. So that's the report from the service desk as of today. Thanks, Spencer. And we also been working on the Horizon Developer Environment Project. So I'll be posting a sneak peek on our weekly insider chat. So you guys can see what's been going on on that front. On the faucet, we went live yesterday with an awesome new feature, but I'm not going to spoil it right now. We'll have Jonathan speaking about it. And uh, we've been providing web dev support to Martin. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Gustavo. Next one, we have Rowan on the BD side. Hello, everyone. Couple of updates from the BD team uh, this week. So first off, the keen-eyed among you may have noticed already that there's been a new uh, mobile wallet added into the Horizon website. Uh, that is uh, a wallet from the guys over at Deep Dive Tech, uh, DDT wallet. So it's available for iOS and for Android. We've done some internal testing. It works very, very well. Really nice, clean user interface. So a big thank you to the guys over at DDT for integrating Zen and supporting the ecosystem. And then the other update is a new exchange partner, and I will obviously post links uh, to both of these in the weekly insider chat once I finish talking, so you guys can go and check it out. Uh, the exchange partner that we're just announcing today is an organization called Bitfair, uh, based in the UK, but with operations across Asia as well. Uh, these guys are offering a kind of short, um, bonus type round where anybody that deposits Zen between now and Saturday will receive uh, a bonus paid out in both their Bitfair token and also in Tether. Uh, they've provided a whole bunch of different pairings for Zen. Uh, I'll provide a picture which will show that and obviously the marketing team uh, will promote this across social media a little bit later today so you'll see all the details that way. Uh, again, Exchange has been tested, works very, very well. 
There's a couple of uh, slightly strange user interface things that they seem to be uh, pushing. One of which is when you deposit funds, you need to actually manually confirm your funds. Uh, but people will find that out for themselves when they go away and have a little look. Uh, so yeah, big thanks to the guys over at Big Bitfair, and a thanks to the guys over at Deep Dive Tech. And if you just give me a few minutes, I'll post the links and I'll post information around the um, the bonus round they're operating there. That's it from me. But I do know that Vano had a couple of things to say. So if you want to jump in, Vano, you can do that now. Hello, everyone. Vano speaking from Georgia. So we have been featured in two very large newsletters this week from uh, Flipside Crypto and Coin Market Call. The first one from Flipside guys is actually linking to a Medium article called 15 Blockchain Leaders and How They Attract Customers and describes 15 customer focused blockchain organizations who, in their opinion, have translated their uh, user networks into growing businesses uh, this year and uh, it is a great article to read, actually. The second one is from Coin Market Call, which is a weekly newsletter called Three Coins to Keep an Eye On. And uh, this um, newsletter highlights three coins each week. And this week, it seems uh, our pricing uptrend and event activity at Coin Market Call attracted their attention, and they even invited people to our weekly insider of today. So, yeah, that's uh, all from me. Thanks. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Next one, we have uh, Lucy to give us the marketing updates. Hey, everyone. Uh, first of all, Fano uh, uh, just mentioned that we, uh, we were uh, uh, featured in Flipside Crypto, uh, the latest article about the 15 uh, blockchain leaders and how they attract uh, customers. So I just wanted to... I really think it's a, a really good uh, article, uh, and I just wanted to uh, um, give some key, uh, key highlights, uh, including uh, the Horizon team is courting multiple third-party institutions to integrate sidechains into their businesses, particularly in uh, supply chain. In addition, uh, Horizon has business dealings and a contract with governments and an incubator arm, Horizon, Horizon Labs, and functions like uh, a Red Hat, which is the world's leading providers for enterprise open source solutions for the blockchain community. So it's just really nice to see uh, an unbiased uh, organization such as Flipside Crypto, you know, covers us in their uh, publications uh, among projects like Binance, Block One, uh, Cardano, Ethereum. Uh, so it's just really nice to see that. Uh, and then also on the brand and design side, uh, we are continuously doing the updates on our uh, on our official website. Uh, so we will see a uh, refreshed look for our team page, Zen chat page, and also mining pool page very, very soon. So and particularly for the mining pool page, uh, we noticed that some of the mining pools are no longer operating or have incorrect links. And so we are rechecking all all of the mining pools on the page, and then we'll have a new list after the updates. Uh, and then also our community has been uh, expanding uh, really, really rapidly. Uh, so we have a lot of new users joining all the time. So in order to help them to uh, um, better understand Horizon nodes and make it easier for them to uh, uh, to benefit from our node network um, as node operators. Uh, so we're making a uh, uh, Horizon node hosting for dummies video. So um, we're trying to get that out as soon as possible. Uh, and then also uh, a just a reminder for our current 10% off sale on our merch store. Uh, uh, it is, I, I believe it's too late to receive things before Christmas uh, if you place order now, but uh, the discount is still valid through the entire month of December. So you can still take advantage of the sale if you want, uh, you know, if you want to order something from our store. And lastly, another reminder is that holiday bonus days are coming next week on our faucet. So uh, I believe Jonathan will have more detailed updates on that. That's it for me. Thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Can you hear me? Yep, very clearly. Okay, awesome. So two cool announcements this week. The first one is we finally have the faucet in other languages so uh if you go on now you will find it in spanish that includes both the faucet page and also all of the instructions which is really great so at this point i'm really going to rely on some of our country leaders 
to start getting the word out about our Spanish faucet. And uh, the marketing team has been doing a great job of providing images in Spanish so that you can promote it in Spanish. Uh, next week, we're going to have a whole bunch of other languages as well, um, including uh, Chinese, Georgian, Russian, and uh, hopefully uh, Malaysian and Gustavo, maybe Portuguese, if you find some extra time. Um, also, in addition to languages, I wanted to talk about a new feature that we just launched yesterday, which is has, has already blown my mind. Rob, I think you're going to really like this. So uh, one of the things that I think that is important, of course, is collecting uh, data and input from the community. So we launched a survey feature, which is optional, opt-in. Um, we have kind of been doing surveys on some of our other platforms like Twitter, Facebook. On average, when we launch a survey, we get about 100 responses in 24 hours. You know, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Yesterday, we launched a survey on the faucet. Um, everyone can go there right now and check it out. And we got, let me take a look. In about eight hours, we got 5,000 responses, which is nuts. That's about 50 times more than we get on our other social media platforms. And Jonathan, you're great. right. I love it. I absolutely love it. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, we actually shut it off. I was expecting about 2,000 and, you know, we got 5,000 in less time. So why is this important? One, it's important because it shows the community is involved, right? The community is interested. They could skip the survey, but they're not. They're choosing to participate. So that's number one. But there are a couple of other things, too, that are really important. So, for example... When we're deciding what new features to put in a product, this is a great place to ask the community which features they prefer. Imagine if within eight hours, you can get 5,000 responses from our community. Sidechain use cases is another one that I think is really important. Blog topics and even open-ended questions um, are possible with, with uh, the technology that we're using. It's just Google Forms. So I want to open this up to everyone on the team uh, in any department. If you are curious or you want some data from the community, reach out to me, reach out to Lucy, and let's create a form. That way you're not guessing and we have actual data to back up those decisions. And uh, that's it for me. Uh, Erica, did you have something as well? Yeah, I, I'm just going to update you guys on our partner highlight for the week, which is going out to. Uh, today's is going to be the Kualit team. They have a new feature integration with uh, Wallet Connect, uh, which just allows people to connect desktop D apps to mobile wallets, uh, which really doesn't affect us currently, but extending usability for people who use their Cool Wallet S, um, which is Horizon capable, is always good. So we're going to go ahead and send that today. Um, and, and see what kind of feedback we get on that. Awesome. We should put that picture of Thredo with the cool wallet. That was a great photo. Yeah, it was. I'll do that. Uh, that's it from us. Uh, Angie, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, so next one we have Rosario with Protein Engineering. Hi, guys, and happy Thursday. So I, I just... For the uh, as we are approaching the end of the year, I just wanted to think about where how much we've we've uh, accomplished as a as a team, and I'm looking forward to seeing a, a series of of uh, improvements and uh, new additions for the next the following year. So for the focus for uh, for us has been continuing with uh, the. Of course, sidechain, uh, all sidechain uh, work, uh, but also looking forward into different types of uh, products and how we're allocating our resources. So we are going to be pausing uh, our mobile effort for now and focusing on the important uh, products that we have uh, currently. And we'll start that off at the start of the year. That is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Rolf, would you like to add any updates? 
Uh, it was an ex- uh, I had a great time uh, with Aldo in Panama this week. Uh, got a lot of uh, different ideas. I enjoy talking to people, and, and uh, Aldo is doing all sorts of uh, wonderful things in Panama that we can certainly expand to all sorts of other Latin American countries and then uh, things all over the world. So that was fun. Um, I'm going to be on vacation next week, so I won't be on the live stream. Uh, take my family out to Utah. We're going to have do some skiing, so looking forward to that. I'll miss next week. But uh, everybody have happy holidays for y'all who celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And now we have Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie. And I apologize to everyone if there's some noise in the background here. Um, but let's see. So I'm traveling for the holidays. Um, but as Rosario uh, and Gustavo compelled me to agree with, um, the crypto doesn't sleep, so crypto doesn't have holidays. And so we're going to continue these updates and the team and, and various uh, elements are continuing to press forward. Um, so that said, let's see some of the, the hot topics on my agenda here. So we are, uh, you know, uh, wrapping up the year. So what we're, we're doing now is we need to start compiling uh, basically an end of year 2019 review like we always do. So we do quarterly and annual reviews. We'll be doing that. And this year has been absolutely phenomenal in terms of team building, or, you know, organization sustaining itself and growing despite a continued bear market. And overcoming that, I think, is is uh, fantastic. Not every team in crypto uh, can say the same. Uh, so I'm very proud of where we've come and, and where we're going. Uh, and then on the technology side, we, we have our core innovation that we have at least been able to bring alpha to market so that developers and other community members can at least see the, the level of sophisticated work that's going on and, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a glimpse there. But, you know, like, like I like to think the, the real action is going to be in beta, um, but it was still phenomenal to be able to get uh, the preliminary work to market just to show you guys. Um, let's see. So that said, considering end of year 2019 review, we also need uh, now we're in process of planning our 2020 major goals. Uh, and like I've said before, so these goals are going to be resource contingent and uh, not just pressing forward on, on the current uh, technology path that's obvious, like bringing uh, sidechains to beta, for sure, going to happen. So we're maturing that protocol. But even like uh, Luca mentioned previously, so our, our uh, in-house team has started to, to deep dive on Sphere. Uh, and very quickly, uh, I'm, I'm at least excited to see um, the, the short turnaround improvements to some of the known issues. Uh, but we are thinking, how will we manage this in the future? Because the team that we had in-house really wasn't uh, scaled up to manage products like this. Uh, but I do want to set up an in-house product uh, team, whether this is interim on the path to hiring more people uh, or whether or not we, we just have a composite mix of uh, current engineering, uh, UX, uh, design, and so forth. Um, so anyway, more to come on that. But and the fact that we're bringing this in-house and starting to expand our, our skill set in that direction, I think is extremely important, especially as Sphere by Horizon wasn't meant to just be an app. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just meant to be a wallet. It was meant to be a broader app, in particular, as a potential candidate, our best so far, as the dashboard into the sidechain ecosystem. Um, so taking some ownership and control of this now, I think, is absolutely critical. I'm uh, really excited for it. And this is also a path towards open sourcing it. Uh, okay, so next up. So the, the other big thing that I want to talk about for 2020, and we've, we've gone a really long way in this direction already, but ecosystem stability is absolutely critical. So we've started to lay some, some very good foundations for this, just in terms of how the foundation is being governed, bringing on new board, you know, uh, uh, new directors to our board, um, you know, organizing efficiently at, as an organization itself, um, but then creating things like the or setting up the Zen IP process, the Zen improvement proposal process, so that we have open dialogue uh, about what uh, new features or improvements will go into our, our future software. Um, this is something that's absolutely critical. Combining this with, um, you know, a, a community council that uh, Peace Two has, uh, you know, uh, worked on laying the foundations for, and hopefully we can get stood up in in short order, uh, so that we can aggregate community sentiment and empower the community more, rather than just participating in, and uh, you know, rather than just participating to dialogue in say these calls or in our social media uh, platforms, what I want to do is have the community take more active roles in governing the ecosystem. So that, that's a really important thing that I think as we go forward, we need to decentralize further 
And that's how we achieve more of a robust kind of anti-fragile ecosystem. Uh, we, we need to empower community developers more. And this was what HDE, or the Rising Developer Environment, was all about. So couple HDE with Zen IP. And this is the, the big set of projects that are immensely valuable that Jonas has been working on. Uh, but this is what we need to empower our community developers and actually cultivate uh, new community developers. So we, we want this to be open to very novice at coding who wants to learn how to code and we can curate very simple opportunities for, for them to start contributing all the way to very senior developers, very senior engineers, uh, senior architects. We want everyone to come into the community and start participating. So HD is all about curating these opportunities and providing an economic incentive mechanism so that people can con- contribute efficiently and also gamifying this in a way or creating a social mechanism so that people can spontaneously form teams. And ultimately, I want to see this uh, truly contribute to our decentralized governance. And that if we have spontaneous creation of engineering teams that are participating in the project, we have fewer points of failure and we have much more diversified contribution to the system. Uh, and then, of course, ultimately, this should lead towards us competing the treasury resources. Uh, so I don't want the foundation here to have a monopoly on treasury, uh, which sounds a little weird because we bootstrap the system exactly that way. But the plan was always to decentralize this. And, and I think that 2020 is going to be a, a major step towards that. Whether or not we have a fully in production DAO is another story. And in fact, I'm I'm uh, certainly we'll, we'll see how the 2020 planning goes, but uh, you guys all know that that was something contingent on our side chain technology, and then we can start building that. Um, but that is the goal, so I want to start moving in that direction. We could lay the groundwork now with Zen IP, with with HDE, with forming teams of other developers, with encouraging other companies and organizations and academics to come in here. It's exactly what we're doing, so we're on a path towards decentralization. Uh, something that uh, I'm very excited about, and 2020 is going to be a, a huge year for us. So that's all I have. We can open up to questions quickly. I have the questions. Um, so the top uh, number one question is, almost every coin is in red. How is Horizon blue and green? I love it. <laughs> well, my short answer is hard work pays off. And we've been grinding like dogs for, for years now. And we've really stepped it up. So. I, I could not be more bullish, and I don't say that from an investment perspective. I say that from the, the maturity of our uh, ecosystem that we've built here and that we are building. And not only that, but look at the team that we have and been able to continue growing during these times. Uh, I, I think our team is, is hands down one of the best in the industry. Totally agree. I just had a little look at coin market cap because I didn't realize everything was in the red today, and I guess that's kind of right. But I just flipped it by uh, kind of growth in this twenty-four hours, and Horizon's the second largest growth in twenty-four hours from the top hundred coins. So hard work is definitely paying off, slowly but surely. Absolutely love that. Thank you. So the second question is: I heard there will be a halving. What will that entail? I'm sorry, there, there will be a what? Oh, having, did you say? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. So uh, a TBD, what that will entail, just uh, mechanically what it means is the, the new coin emission rate is going to be cut in half. And this is just our, our money supply curve. It uh, is exactly the same as Bitcoin, just uh, uh, time phased a little differently because we launched after Bitcoin. But uh, in terms of the... the uh, the timing, our, our emission schedule is, is such that it, it, new coins emitted get cut in half for four years. Now, how will this impact us? Actually, so from uh, I think that that's a, a very interesting question because we do we do a lot of budgeting. We do a lot of uh, uh, you know try to forecast where we're going to be, say, a year from now, and what can we program in in terms of projects with the resources that we have. It's really hard to try to forecast what resources we're going to have because we know how much Zen we're going to have. We don't know how much that Zen is going to be worth in terms of dollars, for instance. Um, so but we'll see. Uh, I make no predictions. So I, I don't believe that we live in, a, in an efficient markets world necessarily, but there's probably some truth to uh, rational expectations in markets. And there's a whole bunch of finance theory behind this. I, I think that uh, reality usually falls somewhere in the middle from theory to, to practice. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Okay, our last question is, almost everyone has a mobile wallet. When will mobile fee arrive? I, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I missed that one, Lucy. 
I'm sorry, my, must be my mic. Sierra, Sierra Mobile. Yeah. Was Sierra asking, Mobile? Yeah, yeah. When will uh, Mobile Sphere arrive? Yeah, uh, Rosario, do you want to handle that one? So we are uh, currently uh, still in the find fix phase for Sphere Mobile. We uh, paused that effort uh, just uh, currently so we could focus on Sphere desktop, uh, desktop performance uh, issues. And we will uh, take a look at our roadmap in, in the future. But yeah, it's definitely a, a, a priority. It's probably not the top priority uh, at this time. Um, but we are very, very close. It's it's been fully developed. We're just uh, uh, just refining some of the bugs, uh, core functionality bugs, and then once those are fixed, we'll be able to uh, have it for uh, public testing. Is what I would like to do. And uh, once we we have that, we'll be able to refine some of the UI issues that that are present. But uh, uh, right now, we're uh, we pause the effort because of resources, but we will start that up uh, at the start of the year. Hey, thank you, Rosario. That's it. I'll start the question of the day. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you all for being here once again. Uh, see you in our uh, next Weekly Insider. So have a great day. Thank you.